it wasn't on anyway, so don't worry yeah, about sorry, it. Sorry, don't turn it on. Well, it's just now. Well, you know the stuff I talked about. I uh, didn't make any of these. I pull the tunes off and reuse the tapes. Yeah, I don't even get the power on. Like I was talking about, so I didn't want to. It isn't on there, man. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to take that I noticed I didn't I didn't say anything about it, but I noticed that yeah, you look fine. Do you miss it? <laughs> it was kind of a trademark in a way though. His tooth gone. That one oh. tooth. I, what happened? Somebody said you we heard you lost it. That's all I heard. Somebody said, Well, Bud Bud lost his tooth and I thought, Oh my gosh. What did you do with it? Did you break it off? I had some good frozen chocolate candy in that oh, spot. Oh yeah. <laughs> I worked on it, you know, it was cut off everything, you know, and just used it. But uh, mm. I've got my teeth. I like little Joe the other night I was talking to him about that. I said, Joe, I said about the, my teeth. I said I said my teeth I eat with them and they're good and they don't hurt or nothing. Well, I was gonna say they don't bother you. Well, ah. Get a plate, get a partial plate if you want to worry about that. But <laughs> get a partial plate with just one tooth in it. That way you'd be back like you were. Uh, but anyway, Joe said, Ralph, he said, don't get no false teeth. He said, I got them. And he said, I don't say. He said, they ain't no good. He got false teeth on it. Did he bother you? Uh, not really. Oh, I think everybody gets used to it. Uh, you have to. Well, I've been thinking about pulling the upper down and getting the upper. Some of them get too fast, I think, with it. That's got so many notes in it. I like the way you play it. Play 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 oh, go ahead, play it. Have you ever heard it? Yeah, I think yeah. so. people that we knew and uh, 
I knew a, I didn't know the man, but he's supposed to be a fine banjo picker back in the early 30s. His name was Homer Davenport. So me and Grandpa were talking about him, and he had a banjo supposed to be famous. Supposed to be a really fine one. So uh, uh, Grandpa said, you know something? He said, I got that banjo. Go get it, bring it back and go. So he went and got the banjo and brought it back. It was nothing. The old boy made it something when he played it. That's what it was. I don't know. It looked like a new banjo. It looked like it hadn't been played a whole lot. It sounds terrible. That grandpa said it was two thousand dollars, but I sure was paying for that. We got to talking about Jim Reed, the Indians and the Bob Reed. Do you know that? They were old friends of mine. Who? Jim and Bob Reed, do you remember him? On Springfield, he's on there for you for a long time. Oh, they were fine. Old backwoods he played. And so Grandpa said that Jim was in a hospital back in Virginia. So when I told him no, he said he was dead now. But he was a friend of the Jolly Chuck. He was a he was a me and him had a fine act that he could uh, but I wouldn't want him back again. God dang it. I guess we call him an alcoholic. say he was going to bring a car over for us? Sometime today. Well, he told me he was going to be here in the middle of the morning. I wonder if he said he's going to come down in the afternoon. No, I, I called. He, he, uh, he'll, he'll get in touch with us when he comes. He, he, if you hadn't been here, he'd get in touch with us. How did Trey? I haven't changed my eyes. So I this digital watch too hard for me to change, so I just add an iron now. Look at it. Uh, Gordon, what could you do on the Your money sitting on your ass is how you get your money. You said that. Oh. <laughs> now you know what kind of like a jewel.
your tape and then turn it around. Now it's ready to play. Maybe it's, put it on the none list, I want you to skip over until you find that piece. I want you to hear that. Did that shut up automatically when it got to the end of the tape? It's supposed to, but it didn't. But it, let's see, forward. I want to run that tape. No, it won't. Skip it up here and push it forward. Yeah. Gordon, you're out of a tape player. Well, that's just a little spare. Where'd you get where'd you find that poem? I mean, is it? I got it from history. A book or something, I mean, yeah. And I've got a lot of history on the Civil War. I've been see. I had two uncles that was killed at Pea Ridge, Arkansas. Yeah. My grandmother's two brothers. One of them went over in Oklahoma and come over with an Oklahoma brigade into the battle and died with a bunch of Indians. Yeah. In the fight. Let me go call this guy again and see if we can get hold of him here. I stopped getting old at 39. I didn't get old at 39. I don't mind being twice as old as 39. I told him about that. Go right ahead and bust it playing. That's good. We like it. Uh, I think the most difficult thing we've got is to get our songs together. I mean, my boy, they, they've got their songs together. What about y'all singing the song that. Uh, Mind if I let this go so I no, can take it back? No, it's all right. You're welcome to it. Yeah. You're fine. 
a little bit of each thing. You were doing great. Well, I don't have it exactly. I'm afraid if I turn that on the end now because of my teeth. I'm really not bothered. Had all that. Well, maybe it just hasn't got enough practice on, but we'll have to do it. I have to do it from Thursday. I think. That uh, song, that other song that you're talking about there, doing first, I guess you could go through it. But I'll tell you what, let's go through another instrumental before we do that. Sure. How about, how about this time? I don't know whether we got that, uh, hell of a good enough to do that part. We're going to about have to do something. I, I wouldn't know. What the hell?
thing went around. Mm -hmm. We left it right up in the mic. Turn a little loud. It's a lot taller than this. What it is, Zap, is, is, is a verse and a chorus and a verse and a chorus. And then there's that, you can listen to it, we play that little home sweet home thing at the end. And then, yeah, well, let's go over it again. Yeah. Oh, you said the verse? Maybe I got the verse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um, what do you mind doing? Do we have enough mics that I'll do yeah, it? Yeah, Jim is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do it again behind. Microphone there singing, man. Did not have a good setup.
Time's up. Might be one of my goals. We fucked it all about it. That's what I'm saying about it. If we get it back someplace, we'll get the music back. No, I don't want to say it. I'm just saying that it's still moving back like you aren't ready to get it. Yeah, I think we're getting tired out. Sounded okay. No, you sound all right. I think you're just feeling it. Well, you sounded good. No, I know. I know. Thank you. 
can never figure out, um, that what? I mean, like, I know, one of the first. In the chorus it goes, honey babe, I found your ride more, was it the easy or? I found your ride. Or is it stand there? or the banjo or whoever takes that part.
What's that waltz? Uh, the girl's name, Barbara Ann Waltz? No Barbara Waltz? Yeah, you? indeed. I don't think we're ready to play it on stage, but I want to play it anyway. Go ahead. Yeah. What's the, what is it? Barbara? Barbara's. Barbara's Waltz. Barbara's I get that Barbara Ann of uh, uh, Sl uh, Smith. Yeah. Chord progression okay. Yeah, I think that. so. Just have to smooth it out a little bit, but I mean, I got it okay. Uh, That's let's play. the best way I've ever played it, I believe. I yep, mean, in perfect time. Yeah. Uh, one thing we need to waltz, we need to play is Missouri waltz. Yeah. Well, I guess they'll want us to talk a little bit, so we'll mention that second part. Let's see, play uh, in D. What else is up in D? Oh, Piedmont. Piedmont. I can remember it now.
crazy Irish washerwoman thing. And and go over the river to Charlie first. All right. I want to get that chain. I want to get that chain smooth if I can. Well, yo, what was it? Almost sound like you were trying to get into some of that Appalachian slides or something on that wall. Oh, uh, oh, it was in that Barbara's wall or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was in. Uh, oh, what, what it was? Down you home. Yeah, down home. Now, I caught some of that stuff in his fiddling tonight. It's that different type of playing. That folk guy, whatever his name was up there, it's different. Yeah, uh, some of the stuff he did wasn't just fast playing. It was a different. Blizzard. Yeah, different than we play. It, even our fast players don't play like he did. It was a different style. Uh, okay, I tell you one. We'll get Weidman's in there.
Okay, we got what, Waverly, and we want uh, uh, Doc, uh, Doc Jessup Schottisch, and we want uh, Flowers, Flowers, and we want Seamus, and we want uh, Macross Ford, so I was trying to think of, not Doc Jessup Schottisch, Macross yeah. Ford. We really maybe ought to write some of these down. I think we will. And I think I've got some tape. So, of course, I'll have to go like this to, to, to on certain key ones. I mean, yeah. now, most of it we can fill in with those others, but there's a few yeah. in there. Waverly's one we want. Yeah. Okay. But after we finish here, we'll list these. I'll write them real small and we'll tape them. Up. <laughs> All right. Good tape.
So I think, I think we'll just announce that when we start. So we're not going to play these as long as we normally would because we're going to play yeah. So also this is to get you ready for me trying to not quit at the right time. Because <laughs> I'll probably try to go on. But anyway, that's what. Play, uh, play the buke. That'll be a thing. You'll like it. Be quitting them early, that'll throw me off. Yeah. But now, certain ones will go all the way through. Flyers, the Waltons will go all the way through, and Flyers will go all the way through, and uh, Billy yeah. will go all the way through those, because that'll make some stuff we got. And if we get the rags, we'll go all the way through with them. But those horn pipes, Three stuff, times through. Yeah, horn pipes we can cut off like we, you know. They, also, another one, uh, uh, Ox and the Orchard, no. A, what's the A tune? Seth Thomas Clock? That's from G. I know, what's the A tune? Uh, that you played down at the Mountain View the first time. Where they all started clapping. Yeah. I guess it is. Is it running? Yeah, it's running. I guess so. We won't need to even worry about that though until we'll play a little bit in the fiddle workshop and then we need to remember what we played there and not yeah. repeat any of it. That'd be all right. Good Lord, we could play 10 hours up there if we want to. I think I'll say something. Now our music's going to be a little different, a little slower than some. 
Uh, but the thing is, this the, the variety of this music is what makes it, that's what folk music is. That's what makes it popular. And the main thing about it is happy music. Well, it's happy. Yeah. It's not to be anything to worry about. If you don't like somebody, that's okay. Let's see. Somewhere in the workshop or something, let's play uh, New Range number two. It's okay, a kind yeah. of a different. Uh, Arkansas Turnback's another one. All right. Let's play it right I forgot now. it. Let's see if I can remember it. This may be too common in this part of the country about Rocky Mountain horn, uh, not Rocky Mountain uh, snowshoe. Rocky goat, Rocky goats, what are Rocky Mountain goats? Rocky, Rocky Mountain goat. That, uh, I don't even know if I remember snowshoe. Yes, I will. I think. It's
Hey, on that one though, over the river to Charlie's and uh, Irish Washerwoman, let's just drop it at Irish Washerwoman. Yeah. Instead of going back there. Yeah, it's, I don't it's, think it's it a does. tricky thing. Yeah. Well, no, even if it was tricky, I mean, it just makes it longer. Yeah. We won't need that. Now, I'd like to work on it sometime where we could back up then and finish. Yeah. Just like Flock of Birds, I want us to get back on that again. And yeah. Get your version and Raymond's. I think that really sounds yeah. good. To yours, to Raymond's, uh -huh. then to yours, quick, and Raymond's quick. And yeah. But we'll do that later on. But okay. Let's, so let's uh, on tomorrow if we play that, and we will probably. Why will? Okay. Well, Thank you.
how that's going to work. I'm going to use this one to go back on. So, oh, okay. uh, Bill Schmidt and uh, Brad Lethbridge. They're going to help out as well. Last night. Yeah, I saw you brief play and then I went to look for you. <laughs> Did you like the idea of the, the concrete? I'm getting, I'm trying to get used to the concrete. I was surprised the number of people who not only liked it, but didn't do it very well.
and perform uh, traditional uh, American folk music or old time music as uh, we kind of specialize in here. And among them uh, are a few whose efforts I think stand out significantly over the years. Uh, one person that uh, has been extremely instrumental in this effort is the person who was the, uh, the founder and leader of the legendary Hollow Rock String Band. Uh, he's extremely active both um, in the academic preservation of this music and in the performing and the, the real live collections and playing of fiddle tunes, kind of a rare combination. He is now a director of the American Folklife Center, a uh, division of the Library of Congress, and we're extremely honored to have him here performing a set for us tonight and directing the fiddle workshop this afternoon. Would you welcome Alan Jabour? real well known um, and I never 
and learn how to play it by, like much of anybody else. So it's, some people uh, get done playing this ordinary tune, but say, well, that's a nice tune, what was that? But there is some Tommy Jerome, I'm sure. One of my favorite of the fiddlers who's here last year. And I hope you don't have to ask. <laughs> in that, that scratchy sound too sometimes if you like the scratchy sound. Some folks even use black diamond strings which are the closest thing to banjo strings that you can put on the fiddle. West Virginia fiddle players like Wilson Douglas use those strings. You wonder how he, how he gets that sound. That's mostly in him of course but the fiddle helps.
one of the things that that uh, that uh, divides up different kinds of Boeings is whether you play separate strokes for each note or whether you group them together in what we call slurs sometimes, more than one note on a bow stroke, or how you combine it. And there's a sort of an infinite uh, potential for combining and recombining patterns of bowing, and that's a lot of what gives each fiddler that special character in their playing. Uh, it's the, it's the, uh, the groupings of separate strokes and slurred strokes into a, a complicated, elaborate pattern. Well, this is Bill Schmidt now, but coming on down the line. He, he's a fiddle player that I see sometimes in the Washington area. Uh, that is, I see him when I get out because I don't play fiddle as much as I do. But uh, Bill, do you want to continue with Old, old Joe Clark or switch uh, off to something else? No, I think we've heard uh, old pretty Joe definitive Clark. versions of Old Joe Clark. I don't think I have a, have a whole heck of a lot to add to that. Um, I'm going to play a tune. Uh, the, this version of the tune comes from Kentucky. Um, I think it's one of a whole family of tunes. It starts out with Smith's Reel. Uh, this particular version I learned is called um, Stuart's Longbow. And, uh, it's like a number of tunes I play. I, I kind of play pretty much the same notes all the way through, but try and mix up the bowing a little bit. And uh, I was interested in what Alan just said about bowing, you know, about the way you group the notes and then where, where you change the direction of the bow and for me that's that's a real important part of, of uh, the whole process and then when, when that bow changes direction that's kind of like punctuation you know and, and you get a little sound when that happens and where you put that sound is real important to the way the whole piece moves rhythmically so uh, i think that's what this tune is all about i hope that's what it's all about <laughs> Play for there's nobody that plays quite like him. Uh, 
he'd probably come out on the smooth end of the spectrum if you talk, talk about a spectrum in Sydney from scratchy to smooth. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to hear. So with that introduction, I'll let you know. See, I have to say all these things to get him to play more after playing the whole set. Right? <laughs> I don't have any special treatment. He's a but a lot of people say to me, I don't see how you get what you do out of the fiddle with as little bowl you use. And I, I don't know, I, I don't use a lot of bowl. I'm certainly not a long bowl fiddler. But I used to know uh, a Missourian who was a contest fiddler. He liked to play in fiddler's contest. His name was, I can't call right now, but uh, he, he was awfully good. And he was a showman, which is a good deal of fiddling in a contest, a showman He uh, was, I've been told several times that he always played with a three-quarter bow because it looked as if he was using more bows than he did. And uh, I don't know why I'd rather think that, because he is very aggressive. He'd poke up and stick his foot out in front and start in, and he just used the whole bow. Come to think of it now, it looked more like a short bow than a long one. Uh, uh, this, this tune is called Sail Away Ladies, and it's kind of a custom licks in it that's a little bit different about bowing. fiddlers in the upper south that I hung out with in the 60s. Uh, it really fascinated me. This gets a little bit technical, so I won't bore you too much with it. But you know, if, if you beat a pattern like this, like uh, people hear that and they say, oh, well, that's jazzy. That's American music that came out of jazz and and you know you hear it all over the world and the world associates that with american music popular music uh it did in a sense come out of jazz but it was fascinating to me to, to discover that all the oldest old-time fiddlers that i hung out with in virginia north carolina and west virginia use that pattern in their bowing and what they do is uh, they play like they wouldn't use it all the time but they threw this pattern in constantly and what they do is play three separates and then three slurred together and then two separates, which is three, three, two pattern, just like in jazz and everything else. And all of that has led me to speculate that this is a real rhythmic pattern in American music, a lot older than people realize. I'll give you a little example of it in, in a tune that everybody plays, Soldier's Joy. And if you played it sort of straight, it would go. Well. I can't resist throwing in little syncopations, but but the way I play it uses that syncopated pattern, which I picked up from old time fiddlers. Thank you. 
Fiddling is associated with dancing. Art and I were talking earlier about playing fiddle for dances, and most fiddlers do have the occasion to play for dances. Some people who think of fiddling think of fiddling as something devised to accompany dancing. Well, in a sense it is, of course, and I don't know that we'd have fiddling if it weren't for dancing. At the same time, the only fiddling is not just for dancing. And you go to any dance and hang around the musicians, you find out that they're playing for the dance, but they're also talking about other things and sort of, they have their own aesthetic world, I guess I'd say. And a lot of tunes are passed along, not because they're good for dancing, or because they're good for anything except just to listen to because they're beautiful. And every fiddler has some tunes that he thinks of that way, I think, uh, that, that he would never think of playing for a dance, but that he loves to play for himself or for other people who really are into listening to fiddling for the beauty of it. I wonder if I could use that as a theme and see if I could tempt forth some uh, tunes for each of us that way. Uh, this is our chance to play oddball things that, that we don't always play when we're playing for a straight square dance or something. Mike, anything? Yeah, why not? Down the line again. Well, this is something you definitely wouldn't play for the dance. In fact, it's probably more at home, maybe the day after a dance. I've, uh, in talking with some old time fiddle players, and I've uh, heard them say sometimes that the fiddle wasn't always held in this fashion. Of course, it was quite often held in this fashion, and I've seen fiddlers move the fiddle instead of the, the bow sometimes. I'm sure you've seen that out. And some even hold it down here, and so I thought that I'd sing you a song with the fiddle down there. But I've heard one modern fiddle player who does this in Western North Carolina. It's just a, a way of playing differently, I guess. I'm like, and why don't you all sing along on this song? You'll see why. It's, a, it's called Bright Morning Stars Are Rising. It wouldn't necessarily be sung in a dance, I don't expect. <laughs> Down in the 
breaking in my soul. Everybody sing it. Bright morning stars are rising. Bright morning stars are rising. Bright morning stars are rising. Day is a breaking in my soul. when I hold a fiddle up here, I have a heck of a time singing at the same time. Now, some people are able to sing and fiddle or walk and chew gum or whatever at the same time, but I'm not one of those people. But maybe if it were further away from the chin, it would be a little less like your voice. Because to me, the fiddle is like my voice coming up there. And so if I try to do something else with my voice, even say shut the door, I usually end up either choking or stumbling in my fiddle. I don't know, what do you think? Well, for me, I, I do sing with it up I here do it quite often, uh, more often. And the, in tradition, the way I've heard people say it was one kid, one kid just started playing it that way when he's too young. It was, in fact, I think it was in Missouri, and Lena Hughes told me about this one who did that. He was too young. He couldn't hold it. That wasn't wrong. So, and just kept on playing that way until he was 90, uh, literally. And then another fellow that I met, um, he's about 35 or 40 now, and he lives in southwestern, uh, southern, southwestern North Carolina. He hurt his arm. He says he can't hold his arm up here. Um, so I suppose there's a lot of different ways, and some people just want to be different, too. Uh, might happen especially with siblings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Brad, you want to continue around the horn? Um, I guess so. I don't really, I was sitting here thinking what I would play, but a lot of what I play, in fact, even the tunes that I regard as good for listening have a pretty strong beat to them. I was going to, but I know I was going to play a waltz called The Blackest Crow. I know a waltz is also a dance tune, but it's a slightly different kind of dance tune, of course, and it requires different kinds of bowing patterns. And uh, so I thought I would play this tune. It's an old, I actually learned it from a, a banjo tune from Tommy Gerald of uh, Surrey County, North Carolina. And uh, I worked out a fiddle part for myself. Uh, I tend to play it a little faster than the person would want to waltz to it because I sometimes do sing it.
still haven't made up my mind what I'm going to play yet. I guess the pressure's on. Got to do it now. Okay. Um, here's a here's a tune that's probably not a great unaccompanied fiddle piece, but I'm going to do it anyway. I think it makes a better band number. Uh, it's a tune called Old Joe, and there are a whole bunch of uh, sort of related Z tunes called Old Joe. Uh, this is one of them. It's sort of less related to the other ones, and some of the other ones are related to each other. And uh, this this one comes from uh, Dr. Humphrey Bate and his Possum Hunters, who were one of the, the bands who played on the Grand Ole Opry way back when. And um, there's some conjecture as to what Old Joe is, what that means. Some of the opinions are kind of unpleasant. Uh, I just, I've always assumed it was stale coffee, so we'll let it go with that. <laughs> I think that after I play this once through, it'll be apparent as to why this is not a good dance tune. Thank you. 
Well, that was really cute of it. I know, so. I, I've retuned my fiddle like this. Some fiddlers say, well, that's the tuning you use for Bonaparte's Retreat, and it, it is, uh, but it can be used for some other tunes too. And there's a fellow in West Virginia named Burl Hammond that I have spent a lot of time with over the last 20, 15 years or so. And he plays a couple of marches that have been in his family uh, in this tuning. One of them is a tune he calls Washington's March. This is sort of an interesting example of keeping music just so beautiful. Probably back in the early 19th century, there was local militia in that area, and they probably had fife and drum corps, and so there was a certain amount of military music or marches that would be played. But after the Civil War, that pretty well died out or got eradicated, and, and nowadays, uh, the fiddlers I know up there, they wouldn't march to anybody's drum, but uh, they do play some marches, and they, they play them now, not to march to, but just because they think of them as beautiful tune. He calls this uh, Washington's March. Soldier's Joy again, all of us. Yeah, look out as well. Uh, Mike is well, but he's going to try his look at, at playing a second, what he calls a second or an accompanying part on the fiddle. And then we were fooling around with this a little earlier. And maybe Art can do it too. He can. No? You know what I'm It used to be that when you get two fiddlers together, especially before there was guitars, don't you think, that one fiddler would be the second, you know, right. would be the accompaniment. And uh, I don't do this very often, but I'd love to give it a try and I give you some ideas maybe. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's true. We're touched. Really? really? Uh, My mom and everybody. Great. Well, here's another one. Another one you call classics. That was a hangman's reel. Yeah. This one's called the Hangman Eight. No, not really. It says, down on my proverbial knees. Incredibly high uh, technology magnets placed all over the place here, so any tape you make is just gonna get it's gonna sound terrible. So you forget that. Uh, when you get home, don't bring it back out. Sing it pretty. All right, I'll try. I can't really feel this one.
played those two teams an awful lot. And lately, we've got another one we're playing an awful lot. We're going to play it again. It's a song, a police song. And uh, it took us a long time to work it out. And a lot of hard hours, arguing and stuff. Hard tour. Yeah, man. And we're, right now, we have a lawsuit pending in court. Uh, Sting is suing us for. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> and start it off pretty mellow.
also like to thank uh, Michael Seeger for having us here at all. It's a real pleasure. We have a good time. <laughs>
Richard. Richard on the banjo. Richard Sturge. Give him a hand as he unplugs his microphone. Yeah. Uh, that was Deb and Tara on fiddle. Tara and Deb on the fiddle. And Jim Miller with the guitar. Thank you. That's the most enjoyable set I've ever played. I really enjoyed that. So take a minute or two to reset the microphone here. It's been a pleasure of mine to over about 21 years to play fiddle with the, or try to play fiddle with the New Lost City Ramblers. And back in the late 60s, I met this fellow down in 
Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and he recorded in the late 60s and got a whole lot of people interested in just playing fiddle tunes and into listening carefully to fiddle tunes and the ways of bowing them. And he went out and collected from a fellow named Henry Reed, who had some of the prettiest tunes of anybody, a, a person who had before that been unknown to, to most of the fiddlers of the United States, an older man who just remembered old time fiddle tunes. I believe he was from either Virginia or West Virginia. And Alan now works for the government. He's the head of the Folk Life Center down at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And he tells me now he's going back to play the fiddle a little bit more these days, which I think is a well. I learned from Burl Hammonds in Marlington, West Virginia. Uh, just in the last uh, month or so, I've been working on an, an LP record of some early recordings of Burl's uncle, Edmund Hammonds, who died in the early 50s. And he made some recordings in the 40s, which happily are finally going to see the light of day. And Edmund was a, I'd say, a great fiddler by any measure. But, uh, he plays some of the tunes that Burl plays, but sometimes he plays them a little different. Well, you know how fiddlers are. And, and uh, it's been quite an experience for me to sort of immerse myself again in Hammond's, Hammond's tunes, but this time with somebody dead and gone. And there are those recordings, which are this connecting thread between me and the past. It's very, dare I say, mystical. Anyway. Anyway, there's a tune, which I'm now going to play, that Ed and called Big Fancy. And I thought it was a great tune, and I thought I'd try to learn it. Excuse me for learning it on you, but I haven't quite learned it yet, but you've got to start sometime. Thank you. 
a bunch of tunes with different names and it gets so confusing. But anyway, this is a tune called Sally Ann Johnson. Now, it's not the usual Sally Ann Johnson, but I can't help it as Sally Ann Johnson.
too much like work. <laughs> If that was too much work, I'm going to do a shot of Play Sally Ann Johnson. I forgot to mention that it's a tune I learned from my main mentor of old time fiddlers, an old man named Henry Reed, who lived in Glenlyn, West Virginia, or Glenlyn, Virginia, right on the West Virginia border. In the 60s, he was in his 80s, and I used to hang around there all the time and visit and learn and record, and, and he died then, and it's up to the rest of us to carry on. But Sally Ann Johnson was his, and he played all sorts of tunes that nobody else played. But he also played tunes that people did play, and one of them, Forked Deer, is a tune you can hear all over the place. But I learned my, my way of playing from Henry Reed, so let me play that tune. It's sort of one of the grand tunes of the old frontier. And in playing it, I'll think about Henry Reed.
here's a tune that doesn't have a name, or at least Henry really didn't give me a name for it. It's a tune that some of us, when we started playing it, uh, gave a name to, and we started calling it West Virginia Gal. But I have to tell you that that's nice to remember. Sort of catchy, but that ain't what he said. Anyway, uh, it's the, actually the first tune Henry Reed ever played for me. I still remember being stunned at hearing this wonderful tune from him. First tune out of this film. vein and then one more maybe lively to kick me off off the stage that is. Uh, one more in that vein is a, another Henry Reed tune called uh, Ducks in the Farm.
As I said earlier, one of the plagues of fiddle tunes is that different tunes have the same title, and different titles have the same tune as else complicated. Anyway, uh, this is particularly vexing in the case of the title Liza Jane, which to my knowledge has been applied to at least five different tunes. Not different versions, different tunes. And this is one of those Liza Jane. We'll call it Liza Jane number three. <laughs> before his idol, his Uncle Dave Macon, and he tries to do the same kind of job as Uncle Dave did, and I think he succeeds, and you'll judge for yourself, does a real great job. One of the Ozark performers, as you know, this is the Ozark feature year, so let us give another good welcome to Bud Hunt. One thing I'd like to get straight in here, what that fella said about me and Uncle Dave Macon. Ain't nobody can play like Uncle Dave Macon. He was one of that one, of, one and only. But sometimes people say that I sound like him, which makes me feel pretty good. Because I'd be pretty proud if I could sound like you. So I'm going to try to visit with you and pick a little banjo. Then I want to take you down into old Virginia, where my grandpa 
rode a horse from old Virginia. We always called it old Virginia. And rode a horse 2,000 miles. Four years later, my grandma got on a horse and rode up there. She hadn't married me. She was just a young girl. And she got up there and rode a horse 2,000 miles again. That's a long ways to pick a road. I don't know how that's done in about 18 70, I suppose. But anyway, I'm going to give you a little back music. I'm going to give you a little bit picking here for you. And uh, I'll see if you like it. With me and my wife and my wife's family to walk the road, come and get, come and get, come and get, come and get, walk the road, come and come and get. My and the in the town the and the bank is the the bank the bottom the bank and the paper is back of the country walk away from the and the wife and my wife can't walk away from the and the bank and the bank and the bank and the bank the bank and the bank and the bank and the Johnson had an old gray mule, his name was Simon Slate. 
says, that old boy, I don't believe he's got any teeth. What's the matter with that? <laughs> you wrong, lady. I got them in my pocket. <laughs> feel unnecessary, you know what I mean? <laughs> so they said, I don't know what they're talking down here for. <laughs> Most of this stuff I write, I can't play nobody else's music. I have to write my own. Well, Santa kept shooting like he heard him not, but came alive a fool of a pistol 
push out, push up in time and see Sandy's one good eye go out. But there's a good man. Who's last with Sandy? There's seven, another eleven, and he owns those money around. Seven, another eleven, he had a roll like an ocean tide. But he looked at the boys with a sort of a grin, said so another good game that I'm going to get in. And folks said, another eleven, to rake the money to his side. Arkansas, I got two great uncles who were shot in that battle there at Pee Ridge, Arkansas. Right now I'm going to really sing a song for you that was wrote about this time in history. The shots and shells were screaming up on The boys in green were fighting their noble flag to shield. Came a cry from their brave captain, look boys, our flag is down. Who volunteered to save it from this way? I will a young red child. Sing it back or die, then sprang to the kiss of the flame. Save the blind, but give his young life all bones come his soul. They brought him back and heard him softly say. Just break the news to mother. She knows how dear I love her. And tell her not to grieve for me. For I'm not coming home. Just say there is no other can take the place of mother and kiss her dear. Lips for me and break the news to her. From a north or the general has heard of this great deed. Where is he? Speak of land. Twas a noble brave The riser said the captain is going very fast. Then he gave a cry that touched all hearts that day. Why, my friend, my brave young hero, I thought you safe at home. Forgive me, Father, for I ran away. But great the news to mother, she knows how to I love her and kiss her dear sweet lips for me and break the news Thank you. That's the old time way of picking the guitar. That's the original tune of the guitar. It was changed about 1920 the way it's to this day, but this is the original. Hmm. Now I'm going to do a card, do a little bit of picking for it on you, that you can 
caught on to the wagon trains and he went to California. He was 21 and his brother was 22. So the cholera got in amongst them and killed my daddy's brother. But my dad, my dad, my grandpa, I'm sorry to say, my grandpa's brother. And uh, but my grandpa never caught the cholera. And he gave the credit because he stayed drunk all the way to California. <laughs> Now he did. Now I'm not saying staying drunk will keep you from getting a cholera, but I'm neither am I saying staying drunk will keep you from anything. But he said, but I learned something that one drop of alcohol will cure a canary bird of pneumonia. Did you know that? <laughs> now, you all are canary birds, are you? <laughs> but anyway. Um, <laughs> Well, that's all right. Our answer to Moscow's red army chorus. Uh, well, it's been fun playing a fiddling workshop and listening to different people who fiddle different ways, thinking about bowing as, in a sense, the soul that unlocks the instrument and that creates the style and personality of each fiddler. And we've reflected a little bit about how fiddling, no matter where you encounter it, is drawing music out of scratch. And why don't we leave it with that? Thank you very much, and thanks to all of us here for the music.